Hello and welcome to Aero Workshop. In this video I'm going to show you how I made these self-cleaning blast gates for my dust extraction system. These are a 4 inch version but you can reduce it down to 3 inch, 2 inch, whatever size you need for your extraction system. This is what I needed. I am making 10 of them and in, this is all going to be made out of scraps that are lying around the shop so the cost of these is going to, the cost of 10 of them is really going to work out the cost of one purchased blast gate. So money saving tip straight away. So the first thing we will need to make these blast gates is the piece for the main body of the blast gate. And for that I'm going to be using 18 mil MDF. So let's step over to the saw and we'll cut those now. Okay, now we have those pieces cut. The next thing we need to do is cut a hole in those to accept the pipe connector that we're going to be using for the system. Because I'm making so many of them, I'm going to go away from the cutting with a jigsaw or a hole saw, etc. I'm going to use a template that I made for to use with the guide bush on my router. So the piece just sits in like so and then you run your router around and it'll cut a perfect hole for the size of pipe that I'm using. In this instance I'm using a half inch straight cut bit in the router which I'll be changing later on in the process to do another very similar application. So I'll bring it in a bit closer now and I'll show you how I done that.
Now, we have all the holes cut out. So this is nearly finished now. Matter of fact, it could be finished if you so wish, but I am going to run a chamfer around all the four edges because I just think it makes it look a little bit neater. And I'm going to do that on a spindle molder because I have one, but you can do it with a router or you can do it with a hand planer. Like I said, just don't do it at all. It's totally up to yourselves. It's not going to make the blast gate work any better. <clears throat> and also when I'm at the spindle molder, I'm going to machine up some slips that I have lying around here. I'm going to machine a rebate or a rabbit into them to act as a spacer for the blast gates as well. So we'll go do that now and I'll come back and I'll explain it a little bit more to you. Okay? Okay, I have all those chamfered up now, and these are the two little spacer slips that I was talking about. Hopefully you can see them. I've marked the ends of them in red so that they stand out a little bit more. So it's basically just a little bit of slip three quarter B three eight, and I just run a rebate on both sides. So that will give me the, the correct thickness for the, whatever blast gate I'm using six mil. And it also, when it sits in, it lock these parallel to one another. Makes it very easy when it comes to assembling them. Hopefully that's coming out okay on the camera, but I think you should be able to get the gist of it. So when these are held together now, it makes it an ideal time to measure the blast gate. So just holding it together, you can measure between both of the slips and that's 122 mil and now we can also get the length of the blast gate so I need the blast gate to protrude past by a half an inch so I measure from there to the, this edge of the hole and that's 140 mil so bring the 140 mil to the outside edge of the blast gate so that when it's opened that the hole clears the blast gate fully and then measure on to the end and add on another 12 mil so that's making it 302 mil in length or just show you 12 inches in length so Let's go cut those. Okay, now we have those pieces cut out. The next thing we need to do is figure out where the hole needs to be positioned. For that, we're going to loosely hold everything together, slide the blast gate in place, let it protrude the 12 mil to allow for a handle, and then just get a pencil and mark the inside. So, if you picture it, 
push it through to leave another half an inch for this handle you can see that the hole will come out of the body which that gives a perfect seal when the gate is closed you're allowed if you leave it back in the hole is halfway between the hole and the edge it's just a little bit less contact there to seal the blast gate so we need to cut these holes out now and for that i'm going to go back and i'm going to make a sm one small alteration to the jig i use for cutting the main hole and i'm going to change the bit in the router to three eighths of an inch straight cutting bit which that will make this hole smaller by three mil either way so it will actually be the same size as the inside diameter of the pipe that I'm putting into this one. So there should be no place for chips or dust to get caught. So I'll bring you in the setup now and we'll chop these out. Okay, there we have those cut out now. And lining up very nicely for what we want. There's only one more component to be made for this, and that's a handle to go on both ends of the blast gate. And for that, I'm once again, I'm turning back to my spindle molder, where I'm going to machine in three passes a piece of scrap red deal that's lying around the shop here into a handle and so I'm going to machine those I'm going to cut them and then we're back to the bench and we're getting very close to assembling these
Now, there's the two little handles made for each blast gate. There's only one more thing to be left to be done with these, and I'm also going to do it with the spacers, and that's just to knock the corners off of them on my belt sander, which I've set up in a little jig. So I'll bring you in and we'll do that, and then it's time for assembly. Okay, I'm over here at the sander now, and hopefully this is, you're able to see this, but here's my handle, and if I try and sand the handle, the ends of it, it's not sitting very flat, it's wanting to move up and down. So what I done was I got a scrap piece off the blast gate, 6mm MDF, and I just screwed it to a block of 3 quarter inch. And what you do is slide the handle onto it. So then it keeps it level so you can move it and it stays parallel to the belt. So just top tip. So let's get sanding. Okay, we're now ready for final assembly and we have all our components laid out here in front of us. The first thing we need to do is put the connectors into the body of the gate. Now, these are a very snug fit because I didn't want to be using glues or seal or, or anything like that. But if you need to, don't be afraid to use a little bit of sealer if you need it around that part there because if you put it on the inside it might affect the sliding of the gate so try and keep it to the outside but as you can probably see that's a very snug fit I don't need it this one started right now for the next part I made a little jig it's just a couple of scrap bits of timber pinned together that allow this to sit in like that so that it's up off the pipe here and it's sitting on the two sides. So get my spacers, a little small bit of glue, not too much. Don't want it coming into where the blast gate is. Put them in place. Put it in place and put the top of the one on top. And as you can see, when that's they sit in, everything is held level back against the back of the little jig. And all that's required now is a few brad nails to hold it together. Okay, if you don't have a brad nailer, you can bore them and put a couple of screws in them, it does the very same job. Now we'll move on to the blast gate and the handles. Small bit of glue again. Position it on, get it level. Uh, 
Nine. Two brats. The blasket. Slide it into the body. The other handle. Bit of glue. Push it into place. And two brads again. And that's it. It's that easy. Okay, that's how easy it is to make self-cleaning blast gates for your dust extraction system without breaking the bank. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing and it's taken me a while to get used to camera settings and editing and so on and so forth. But I do have other projects that I have planned. One is a more detailed uh, video on the use of templates and the guide bush on the router, which I think is a very useful tool for anyone in woodwork and let it be beginner or advanced um, so that's going to come in the future um, if you enjoyed this video i'd ask you to like and maybe consider subscribing to the channel and maybe even share it to one of your friends maybe they might enjoy the video too and if you want to keep up to date on what's going on just follow us on instagram where we'll try and put a post there maybe once to twice a week to keep you up to speed with what's going on so Again, thanks for watching.